is this one because I want to see what will happen now. We are going to deform this in some strange way. Right? So, look at that. Did you see that in all the previous deformations, straight lines remain straight. So, let us make sure we got this. Okay? So, look at this. All the straight lines which were before straight or straight afterwards also. Can you see that? There is no bending or twisting of the lines. Can you see that? But by the time you get, so this one is also the same way. Can you see all the straight lines are straight? Okay. Notice even here, all the straight lines are straight. Can you see that? Before and after, there is no change. There is only tilting and things like that are the straight line, but they are all straight. You see that? On the other hand, in this case, straight lines are not straight. Things get really distorted. So what used to be a straight line now is bent and twist, twisted and this can sometimes happen. I mean, uh, I am going to copy this again. We will discuss this a little bit later. Let us see. I am going to paste it here. So let us go up here and we are going to paste it. Now we got some items to discuss later. We will discuss it. Okay, so we got three different shapes here and we will talk about that a little bit. Then we go back to our original thing. So that's what distortion means. Now we really distorted it. Horribly stuff. Okay, but what I want you to notice is that if I draw a small enough square, look at the square here, look at one of the corner squares. Okay, this is what it used to be. Let's look at this square, this tiny square. What happens to it? Can you see it's moving, it gets distorted, pulled, pulled, pulled. By the time you go there, can you see that small square things look kind of straight, you know, it got kind of, but every piece. A square has become a parallelogram. You can see everything is a parallelogram now. Can you see that? Everything is a parallelogram. So here, of course, nothing has happened. It has become just bigger. But you can see this one is a parallelogram. So it looks like an assembly of parallelograms. What you look like a, originally like an assembly of squares. So starts out set of squares, assembly of squares, right? You finish assembly of parallelograms. That's what I want you to think about. In three dimensions, you start out with an assembly of cubes and it will become an assembly of parallel, parallel opipeds, tilted, uh, tilted cubes. That's what, that's how you get interesting shapes. Okay. And by the way, this is how all your computer graphics work. They will take cubes and make them into interesting shapes and then plot them, but they will all make them into parallel opipeds approximately. Okay, so next we are going to look at something which is different than these. So now we are going to look at, I take a hollow tube and I am going to twist it. This is called torsion. So I am going to take a hollow tube, I am going to twist it. Can you see the tube twisting? Bottom twist one way, top twist the other. And can you see? What used to be straight lines have become helices. You know what a helix is, right? And you can see that circles remain circles, but the longitudinal straight lines become helix. But if you look at a small patch of it, again, you can see a rectangle has become a parallel parallelogram. Can you see that? Small rectangles will become parallelograms. Large rectangles, bad things will happen to them. But tiny rectangles will become tiny parallelograms very close to it. Okay. This is our idea. So I want you to think, remember that. So now let us look at a solid tube and you will see what happens. So there is the solid tube. Can you see these chunks? Nice rectangles on the surface. I am going to twist it. What is going to happen is this top surface, nothing is going to happen. It is going to look the same. It is just going to rotate rigidly, but the sides are all rotate. Can you see how it is tilting? Ooh, that is a lot of rotation. So let us keep a small amount. Now, can you see again, 
a small rectangle has become a small parallelogram. I twist it some more. Now I really twisted it. Now it's kind of because the rectangle is kind of large, it's kind of beginning to wrap around. So I don't want to get it that large, but I want you to understand that small rectangles become small parallelograms. Okay, so you got this idea, right? So what will happen is what used to be like this when you do it like that, rectangles will become parallelograms and they'll get reassembled. That's what I want you to think about. Okay, that is what allows us to do all the calculations for all kinds of deformation. And this is how the finite element method works. It will take the whole object and chunk it up like this into little rectangles and it will convert it into little parallelograms. What the finite element method does is it will draw a free body diagram for every rectangle. So if you look here, that means how many free body diagrams? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 times 16, 256 parallelograms, I mean rectangles. It will write 256 equations of equilibrium. It will do compatibility. You remember uh, the what is it? The deformation analysis, the compatibility analysis, it will do for the 256 parallelograms. The way it will do is the parallelograms have to fit together to form a nice shape like this. Of course, you can see that this is slightly curved. In reality, I mean, in, in finite elements, all these things will be straight. That's why, by the way, they are called finite element. The element is a cube. Got it? I mean, that's it. The three things that we learned, material analysis, deformation analysis, force analysis, done for billions of cubes. That's all finite element methods are. Nothing more, nothing less. There are lots of tweaks, but this is the core idea. Okay, so I want you to understand that the fundamental idea and this is the most important thing and you really have to get it into your brain. Small rectangles will become small parallelograms. that fit together. For example, if I look at this rectangle, let us see, it is the 1, 2, one, two 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8th rectangle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8th rectangle. So it becomes like that. And let's look at this one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8th rectangle. There you go. So this square becomes this parallelogram. Or this parallelogram. We know what to do with parallelograms, then we are back to geometry. So we are going to do the geometry next time, but this is the core idea. Okay, got it? Good.